Hey, welcome back to the Lead Gen HQ podcast. I'm your host, Alex Oliveira. Today, I want to talk to you about real estate. So over the last 15 years, I have had the opportunity to work across many different verticals. We call them vertical and lead gen. For those of you that are in lead gen, we've always called them verticals. But generally speaking, in in business and marketing terms, we refer to those as industries, right? Different sectors, different markets. So in my experience, I've worked with real estate, legal, insurance, construction, colleges, uh, mortgage companies, restaurants in the food industry, daycare, healthcare, uh, flooring, used cars, new cars, home and healthcare, hotels, motels, you name it. I've had the opportunity to work in so many different niches for different companies around the country, both small and large. So what I what what we decided to do here at Lead Gen HQ is take some of those reports and and create some market research that would give you the business owner or the marketer the opportunity to take a very quick view from 30,000 feet as to where is your industry, right? So the reports we created are about five pages and they're not too complicated, right? We took different aspects, you know, obviously taking into consideration that technology is moving fast and you have AI and chat GPT and all of these, the economy is changing. And so everything becoming more mobile, we know that there are different behaviors for businesses and it's challenging. And especially in the real estate industry, you need reliable and intelligent data in order to scale your real estate business. So we also looked at like core, core uh, logic data and other um, like Zillow. And we compared it because everybody's got some different uh, set of data, but our report basically included data from three months. Well, we we basically analyzed it for three months for the entire year going from 2022 to 2023, March of 2023. And we we took a team of data scientists that worked on this and each scientist worked on one uh, special section of the report. We had the census. We really did some deep analysis of what you can find on the census, which if you're a business owner and you're not using the census, you are missing out because the the census business report is really next level. It's got so much rich information about the market in in competition and growth opportunities that it would blow your mind that this data is out there for free about all 320 plus million Americans. Then we analyzed Facebook audience data. So we looked at both the advertising side, but also things like keywords, hashtags. Then we moved on to Google ads. Same thing, Google ads, we did deep dives into not only display, but search and YouTube. Then we looked at Microsoft ads. Then we took Google analytics data from different organizations that we've worked with. And this way we'd be able to compare the traffic. And lastly, we used SEM rush. Okay. So analyzing everything from keyword terms to competition level, average monthly searches and top page bid, right? So that was in the keyword side. And then for Facebook, we, as, as I mentioned, we did, did a deep dive in the demo, right? Demographic, psychographics. So age, gender, number of users, top cities, behaviors, um, all that stuff, right? So we put it together and we're going to put the link into the show notes here. This is going to be a very short episode because it's really difficult to do it on a podcast uh, because it's visual. The data is very visual. So what I can tell you is that real estate industry, we focused on five markets, the five largest states, California, Florida, Pennsylvania, New York, and Texas. Those were the five states. And then we took the rest of the data, the other 45 states, and then benchmarked that as well. So if we look at those five states, the average, you know, like California, for example, average drive time to work is 29 minutes. Okay. But if we look at the population, California, 39 million, Florida, 20 million, uh, Pennsylvania, 12 million, New York, 19 million, Texas, 28 million. And I'm just rounding it off. It's a little bit more than that, but the report will tell you the exact numbers. We tell you the median household income, the percent of of people who are employed. Like for example, right off the bat, Texas has the highest employment, right? 
right behind Florida. Median age, if we wanted to look at that, Texas also has the youngest age population. No surprise that Florida is the oldest. It's got 42 for the age population, right? And then we looked at the total number of housing units, which is very important for real estate in each state. We looked at the median owner occupied housing. We looked at the year the structures were built. So if you look at Florida, the average year it was built was 1986. Whereas if we look at um, New York, it's the oldest, 1957. Median rent, we also looked at that, right? And then on the competition side, we look, we compare the number of establishments. So if we look at establishments for California, you've got 22,000 real estate brokers, um, average revenue per employee and an employer as well. And then when it came to keyword research, we started to look benchmarking those five states to the United States. So if I looked at the word, um, realtors near me, it's very highly competitive with more than half a million average monthly searches in the US, okay, in the US. But then if I go and look at each individual states, obviously, that's going to change a little bit. Real Realtor near, near me is going to be a fraction of that for each of those states, but having the, the top number there. And then Facebook audience, we looked at a data set of 94 million users in those states and looked at the amount of women versus men. So women was 63% versus men, uh, 36%. And then we looked at like words and, and groups and pages that they followed, if they followed Redfin, if they followed Zillow, really anything within real estate, we, we did it that way. Also creating some custom audiences when we ran some ads, then it, it gave us that, that data right in real time. We also looked at the top cities for each one of those. Now, the real estate industry is always fluctuating. is no secret to anybody who works in real estate. And generating leads is becoming more and more difficult because at the end of the day, if you're not creating content, if you're not doing the, the work to engage with your potential buyers and sellers beyond, and I'm, I'm saying, Listen, if you have your MLS, your IDX, a website with a feed of homes, that's like bare minimum. That is bare minimum. But if you're not on social media, because maybe that's not your cup of tea, so you're not engaging with them there, let's say you're not running ads, then pretty much you're doing everything old school. You're probably cold calling. You're probably knocking on doors, going to a lot of networking events. And at the end of the day, you're doing the same thing over and over and probably getting okay results, but the way you scale it is by learning what is happening in the digital economy, how you can leverage your brand, your connections to grow. And as is the case in so many areas of business, the key to sustainable growth is your team, right? So I lean on my team for my business. What I do with lead generation is so important that I have a team behind me to be able to handle those leads. It doesn't do you any good to generate leads or buy leads and then not have the team ready to actually follow up on those leads. And automation in, in itself is not going to solve your entire uh, uh problem here. You know, and the problem that most people have is communication. Today, I can reach out to a real estate agent, broker, whether I'm a buyer or a seller, and you know, more than half of them are not going to return my call on the first day. So that tells me that that person, A, does really crappy business, or B, doesn't really know how to handle customers. So it's interesting that those same people will say, well, I need more leads. Well, you don't need more leads. You need actually to improve your communication process, how you engage people, how you follow up, right? So it's your customer support. And then you can think about doing some marketing because in the game of real estate, it's what used to work is not working as well as, as it used to anymore. And mostly it's done digitally. And people don't want to pay the same level of commissions. I know because I've worked with hundreds of real estate brokerages and real estate agents individually, beefing up their LinkedIn profiles, beefing up their social media, their content, doing podcasts. We did a whole podcast series for several real estate companies uh, that was with Compass. Look, the technology is important, but ultimately in real estate, it's a high 
stakes game and it's high touch, you really have to be on the ball and doing AI uh, is not going to cut it because this isn't e-commerce, it's real estate. You're selling big ticket items, you know, whether it's a house, a condo, a property, a lot, whatever the case is, it's, it's definitely important that you generate leads, but above and beyond that, when you look at this report, what the takeaway should be is to know more about your competitors, know more about the market, the industry, but then know what the top three platforms, meaning Google, Facebook, Microsoft, what the top three are doing, right? Microsoft also owns LinkedIn. So there's a lot of data there that should give you some something to think about, ideas, ideas on how you can leverage your brand, take your current clients, beef up your email marketing, your communication. Think about doing a live every week, a live session, right? An open house that is uh, live, do a podcast. But ultimately, if you're not creating that content, if you're not paying attention to how your market is changing, you're going to lose out to the competition. So data is everything. And this report is it's just bare, bare minimum. We made it very simple. As I said, five, five, six pages here so that you can truly just understand what is at the surface. This report, it can take you down a rabbit hole with hundreds of pages. And so if you're in real estate, don't just depend on what your broker is giving you. If you're a real estate agent, go learn how to do better SEO. Go learn how to do better public speaking. Go do go learn how to engage better with people. You know, hire better marketers to work with you, sales teams, and then do better support. Because that's what the that's what the end user wants, the, the home seller and the home buyer of that average uh, priced home. We're not talking about the 10, 20, $30 million homes. Those are very different. But um, listen, I hope this episode of the podcast has helped you, you know, think about the different ways that you can create more opportunities to grow your real estate business. Lead generation is important. Uh, and this report will definitely help you do that. So with that, I look forward to talking to you on the next episode of the Lead Gen HQ podcast. I'm your host. And until next time, have a great one.